We're visiting with Dr. Joran Dyerberg, and he is a pioneer in the research of omega-3s. Dr. Dyerberg, could you tell us what it was about the omega-3s and the Eskimos that brought this research to, to bear? To be honest, it was a coincidence. Uh, we were, as I just said, visiting, exploring the way of living of Eskimos to try to find out how come that they, in spite of a high-fat diet from seal and seal blobber, had a low number of coronary heart attacks. And we collected blood samples from them, brought them back to Denmark and analyzed them for cholesterol and blood lipids and found they had a fair, reasonable low uh, level of blood cholesterol, but not enough to explain mm -hmm. how come that they had maybe one-tenth of the number of coronaries compared to Danes and to Americans. And we had those precious samples. We had 130 samples. And we, we said no one will ever get up there to remote areas in hunters and uh, Inuits, Eskimos, and collect blood samples in fasting states. So we better do whatever of analyzing we could do. Mm -hmm. And on, on the department that was headed by uh, Dr. Bang, he has passed away now, we had an old gas chromatograph. A that gas? Could, gas chromatograph. That's a technical term for an analytical machine that can analyze fatty acids. Ah. And we said, we better do fatty acids because, and then we'll print it in some journal, and then someone will know in years to come that the fatty acid pattern in Eskimos was that because we had those precious samples. Mm -hmm. So we did fatty acid analysis. And while studying the tracing, the tracing of the fatty acids coming out from that machinery, we found some new peaks that we've never seen before. And we didn't know what they were. So I, as a young researcher, had to do some digging down. And, and I went to America and visited Dr. Ralph Homan at, at, uh, in Minnesota. He was the expert at mm -hmm. that time on fatty acids. And he kindly invited me to his lab. Uh, and he said, Jorn, I guess you have found two omega-3 fatty acids. And I said, omega-3, what's that? And he said, that's fatty acids with the uh, double bonds in position three from the one end of the molecule. And they are called icosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. And I remember myself going outside his <laughs> office and saying, icosapentaenoic. I had to learn these two new names. That was in 72 or something. So that was real. Man. That was new things. <clears throat> Nobody had dug into these before, and I got some samples to identify, and I went back home, and then we found out, yes, these were the peaks that we found in the Eskimo blood, like EPA and DHA, two long-chained mm -hmm. omega-3 fatty acids. And then at the same time, uh, in the mid, early mid-70s, <clears throat> new research came up from Sweden and Britain telling us that from Another fatty acid, arachidonic acid, mm -hmm. could, which is omega-6. I'm sorry this is a bit complicated, but that's how life is. It is complicated. From this fatty acid could be, be made prostaglandins, which influences blood coagulation, blood clotting, mm -hmm. coronary heart disease. And suddenly we said to ourselves, <clears throat> how, why? Could it be so that from our Eskimo fatty acids, there could be another series of prostaglandins that could influence blood clotting in another way so that it didn't promote blood clotting but anti-acted anti against blood clotting? And that could be maybe the, the, one of the reasons to the Eskimo lower currents. And we, went down into that in biochemistry and went to England and I did some research with John, Sir John Vane who, who later on got the Nobel uh, Prize for his research in, in, in arachidonic acids. And we found out that yes, from EPA could mm -hmm. be made new prostaglandins that did not promote blood clotting to the extent that the prostaglandins from arachidonic acid and due to the fact that Eskimos ate a lot of these EPA and DHA, 
we did our uh, tours up there and dug into their, collected their food and analyzed the food from seals and fish, fatty fish, and found out that yes, EPA and DHA is in fatty fish. And we found out that that could be one of the reasons to their lower currents. And from that moment, we published that in 76, I guess. And from that moment, omega-3s went into the medical society. Oh, very good, Dr. Dyerberg. We'll come back and we'll talk some more about this exciting subject. Okay.